Welcome to section 5.2 where we're going to be studying electron arrangements and atoms. First we're going to look at electron configurations. What they are is a, the arrangement of electrons within an atom around a nucleus. Each element has a unique electron configuration. The electron configurations of three elements are shown here, helium, carbon, and chlorine. Helium has two electrons, and they both are at the first S sublevel, so 1s2 is its electron configuration. Carbon has six electrons. Two go in the 1s sublevel, two in the 2s, and two left to go into the 2p sublevel. And chlorine has 17 electrons. Two in the 1s, two in the 2s, six in the 2p, two in the 3s, and finally five at the end to go into the last sublevel, the 3p sublevel. We need to learn some rules for writing these electron configurations. The first rule we're going to learn is the off-bow principle. What it tells us is that electrons occupy the orbitals of lowest energy first. So electrons will go into a 1s level before it goes into a 2s level. It will also go in a 2s before it goes into a 2p, since the 2s level is slightly lower in energy than the 2p. The order of increasing energy is shown below. Now most of them are shown in white and those make sense. You may notice that the ones shown in yellow and orange seem to be out of order and that's because they don't have energies that you would expect. The 4s level actually has less energy than the 3d so it comes before it. We'll see why in the next slide. If you look in this diagram at the right you can see that beginning with the third energy level your orbitals within those levels begin to overlap. You may notice right here that the 4s is occupied before the 3d because, as you can see in the diagram, it has slightly lower energy than the 3d sublevel possesses. Here is a diagram of the 4s sublevel, that spherical orbital at the 4s level, and just one of the d orbitals at the 3d sublevel. And as you can see, the 4s sublevel does not go out nearly as far as the 3d outer edges and that's because the 3D has a little bit more energy to it. That's why the 4S is occupied before the 3D. Sometimes it's easier to understand electron configurations if you draw the electrons in each orbital until all electrons have been placed. Now we don't want to try and actually draw them in pictures of these orbitals. They get pretty complex. But what we can do is depict an orbital just with a, a line or a circle or a box and just picture the orbital in that way and draw electrons in that. This is called drawing an off-bow diagram or sometimes just called an orbital diagram. As you can see here, we can see going clear up through the 6p sublevel, each of those orbitals organized into sublevels and you could put electrons, two electrons, in each one of those boxes because each orbital can hold up to two electrons. Note that it could get pretty tricky to remember the order of the orbitals for filling after you get to 3p since it jumps to 4s before 3d. There is a way to quickly draw a diagram that will help you to remember what order. It's called a filling order diagram and there's one shown to the right that will help you to remember that proper order. So you just start on one line and write 1s, and then on the next line you write 2s and 2p, and the third line would have 3s, 3p, 3d, and continue on in that fashion until you get to the seventh energy level. Then you draw in arrows, diagonal arrows from right to left, and as you can see here, the way they're drawn in, if you follow those arrows in sequence, you can tell exactly what order the electrons will fill those sublevels. Let's practice drawing in the arrows in our filling order diagram, so you try it at this point in your notes. This filling order is actually also noticeable in the shape of the periodic table. As you see in this table, they have labeled what is the highest sublevel currently being filled by electrons. And so the first period has the 1s for in both of those boxes. The second period on the left, we see that the first two columns have electrons going into a 2s sublevel, but when we jump to the far right in the second period, the next six electrons will go into the 2p. And that follows on in the third period with the 3s and then the 3p. But when we get to after 3p, notice in the fourth period we fill the 4s with two electrons. 
before we get to the next region, which is actually a 3D. So we fill 4S, then 3D, and then 4P after that. When we get to the fifth period, we start with the 5S, but then we fill the 4D and follow that with the 5P. In the sixth period, we fill the 6S, and be careful, notice that you wouldn't go to the 5D next, you'd go to the 4F, because this block of the periodic table, remember, has been moved down below the main body, but it actually inserts there right after 6S and 7S for those two rows. So after 6S, you fill a 4F before you fill the 5D and finally the 6P, and so on into the seventh period. Going back to our rules for writing electron configurations, we have a second rule called the Pauli exclusion principle. What it says is that no two electrons in the same atom can have the same set of four quantum numbers. It also tells you that an orbital can hold two electrons, and those electrons have to have opposite spins. Now what this means is that if I'm drawing in electrons as arrows in a diagram, if I want to put two electrons in the same orbital, which I might be representing with a box or a line, it requires that they be drawn with opposite spin. We can see that here as we consider bromine's diagram, which has 35 electrons, and starting with the lowest ones at the bottom, we put in two electrons in the 1s, two in the 2s, and then we fill up the 2p with six, and we continue on and we see in the end, as we get to the 4p, we have five electrons left. We fill those orbitals as you see here. That's what its orbital diagram or off-bow diagram might look like. There is a third rule known as Hund's rule for writing electron configurations. What it says is that orbitals of equal energy are occupied by one electron each before any orbital is occupied by a second electron. So basically, you partially fill each one before you start totally filling any one of those equal energy orbitals. All electrons in singly occupied orbitals will have the same spin. So if I draw my first arrow as an up arrow in my first orbital, then if there's three orbitals of equal energy to fill, like at a 2p sublevel, I would put one in each p sublevel orbital pointing upward before I'd put another one pointing downward in any of them. Let's apply Hund's rule. Carbon has six electrons. We can draw an electron configuration as 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. That's six electrons. So I would put two arrows, one up, one down, at the 1s sublevel. I'd put the next two at the 2s sublevel, one up, one down. But here's where people make mistakes. According to the rules we've just learned, with Hund's rule, we do not put two electrons, one up, one down, in the 2px orbital. At that second energy level, the 2p level, we have three equal energy orbitals. So those two electrons need to be split up between two of those orbitals. So I would draw one up arrow in the 2px and one up arrow in the 2py. And this gives me my completed electron configuration for carbon. We need to practice doing orbital notation. In this notation, lines, boxes, or circles represent the orbitals. The energy level and sublevel go under the line. And up and down arrows represent electrons and their spins. Here are the orbital notations for several lighter elements. Let's draw the electron configurations of these atoms. Let's start with helium. We look in the periodic table, it has two electrons. So I put two electrons at the 1s sublevel and it's full. That's one up arrow, one down arrow, it's done. Boron, however, has five electrons. So I write my orbitals, I write in my 1s orbital, I fill it with two electrons, one up, one down. That's two out of the five. I still have three remaining, so I go to the 2s orbital and I draw it, and I draw one up, one down. So that's four electrons, I have one remaining. So I now need to draw all of the p orbitals. I can't just draw one of them, I have to draw all of them, even though I'm only using one. I draw my 2px, 2py, 2pz. Then I put my one electron in as an up arrow in the 2px. And that one's finished. If we try iron, iron has 26 electrons. It's going to take us a little longer. So we start out with our 1s with one up, one down. 2s, one up, one down. 
draw all three of our two P's. That's the two PX, two PY, two PZ. So I draw up, 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 down, down, down. So at this point, I've used 10 of my 26 electrons. My 3S is drawn next, one up, one down. So that's 12. Then I get 3PX, 3PY, 3PZ, which has one up, up, up in each, one down, down, down. So that at that point is 2, 4, and another 6 is 10, another 2 is 12, and another 6 is 18. I have 8 more to go. So 2 go in this 4S, one up, one down, which takes me to 20. I now have six more electrons, but I'm at the 3D sublevel. There are five of those orbitals. So I draw in 3D1, 3D2, 3D3, 3D4, and 3D5, and start putting in those six electrons. One up in each, remember, so up, 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 up for my five orbitals. I have one left, so I would draw one down arrow in the 3D1. And this shows that I have then four electrons left without a partner and only one at that highest energy level that has a partner. We'll save rubidium to do in class because it's much longer. Now the electron configuration notation is another notation that gets rid of the lines and the arrows. It shows the number of electrons designated by a superscript, a raised number, next to the subshell letter. And you've seen me doing these a couple of other times earlier in this presentation. This electron configuration periodic table at the bottom shows the final, the very last entry in an electron configuration notation for each of these elements. Having this filling order diagram will help us out as we do these. So we're going to write electron configurations for these elements, helium, boron, iron, and rubidium. Helium has two, so I just write down 1s2. Boron has Five, so I do 1s2, 2s with a superscript of 2, and then 2p, but I only have one electron left, so that's 2p1. Iron has 26, so I would have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and then I would have 3d, and there's only six electrons left, so it's 3d6. I know I can have up to 10 at a d sublevel, but I only have six electrons remaining, so it ends with 3d6. Rubidium has 37 electrons, so its configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, and 5, and we only have one electron left, so that would be 5s1. There is another type of electron configuration notation known as noble gas notation. It shortens it down because as we saw with rubidium, that electron configuration notation can get pretty lengthy itself. The noble gas notation shortens it up because what it does is it uses the preceding noble gas as a starting point, it says, okay, we have this inner core of electrons that's the same as that preceding noble gas, and then we have these electrons that go above that as my highest energy electrons. The way that we write that nearest noble gas configuration is we take the noble gas symbol, such as argon, AR, and we put brackets around it, and that indicates those first 18 electrons that go up through 3P6. And then if I were doing potassium, let's say, that's only one electron past that. So I would follow that argon symbol with the brackets with 4s1, and I would be done. Here's aluminum as an example. The nearest preceding noble gas, the one that comes before it in the period above it at the end in group 18, we see neon. So those first 10 electrons are represented just by putting the symbol for neon, NE, inside brackets, and then we have three more electrons to account for for aluminum. So they go into 3s2, 3p1, and there they are. Now this works because that brackets around neon means 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So it just cut that part out, and it was represented with that inner core of neon. This greatly simplifies those longer electron configurations. Since we don't have to write all of the inner core electrons, we just have to write the highest energy ones.